Good morning. I'm very pleased to have been invited along to your club to talk about our charity-sponsored walking holiday for education aid. I'll start by giving you a brief overview of what it entails. First of all, let me explain what we mean by sponsored here. This is where people promise to donate money to the charity if you achieve your goal. In this case, to walk a certain number of miles. Basically, we are organising a ten-day holiday from the sixth to the sixteenth of November, with eight days actual walking, trekking in the Samira Mountains. Let's have a look at some of the details. We require you to raise sponsorship money of at least three thousand two hundred dollars, paying two hundred and fifty dollars of it up front as a deposit, and the rest in stages throughout the year. Out of this, about thirty-five percent will go on your expenses, and that leaves sixty-five percent guaranteed to go to the charity. Which brings me to the most important part: this trek is being specifically organised to help education in the Samira region. Last year, we helped train teachers for the disabled, and this year, we're focusing on the pupils. Each of the walkers' sponsorship money will go to help an individual special needs pupil. In one of the mountain schools, in the second part of the talk, I'll be giving you a lot more details. But back to the basic information. Age limits. This is the second time we've run this kind of holiday, and、um, on the first, we even had an eighty-year-old. But we found it was wise to establish limits this time. You have to be at least eighteen, and the top limit is now seventy. Though you need to obtain a health certificate from your doctor if you are over sixty years old. Now the Samira Mountains are among the highest in the world, but you mustn't be too daunted. We will mainly be trekking in the foothills only, although there will be spectacular views even in the foothills. However, you will need to be extremely fit if you aren't now and you're interested in coming with us. You have plenty of time to get into shape. You will be sleeping in tents. So you must have quite a bit of equipment with you, but you will be helped by local assistants. Your bedding and so forth will be carried by them. We ask that you only walk with a small rucksack with needs for the day. I don't think I've really said enough about the marvelous area you'll be walking in. Let's have a look at some of the sights you'll be seeing. Apart from these spectacular snow-covered peaks and valleys, there are marvelous historic villages. The area has been famous for centuries for making beautiful carpets, although recently there has been a trend to move into weaving blankets and wood carving. The people are extremely friendly and welcoming. We deliberately keep the party small in size to minimise disruption to people and landscape. I hope that there are still some people interested. <laughs> I will be distributing leaflets at the end where you can find out more information. But just for the moment, I'll outline the itinerary, the main high points of the holiday. Obviously, you'll start by flying out to Kishba, the capital city, on day one. After a couple of days to acclimatise yourself, you'll start the trek on day three, walking through the enormous Katiba forest, which will take the whole of the day. Day four takes us higher up, going through the foothills, past a number of villages, and visiting a school for the disabled in Sohan. Then you have a rest day. That's day five, before going to the spectacular Kumi Temple, with twelfth-century carvings, set in a small forest by a lake, and that's day six, the highlight for many. We stay near there for day seven because then comes the hardest day, walking through very mountainous country, but culminating in a swim in the Pate Falls. This is the highest waterfall in the region. Day nine is much easier, with part of the day spent in a village where they make some of the gorgeous red blankets. Then back down to Kishba and the journey home. So you can see it's a pretty packed timetable.